As much as we may object to the imposition of laws, civilization cannot survive without them. Yet there are still a few places on our planet that have no laws at all. In some cases, these anarchic situations are deliberate. In others, governments technically claim authority over these areas, but have no way of effectively exercising it. These are the five places with no laws. Western Sahara is the largest territory in the world with no official government. It sits on the west coast of Africa, south of Morocco, and west of Mauritania. Western Sahara is one of the most sparsely populated areas on Earth, averaging two people per square mile. Geographically, it's dominated by the lifeless Sahara Desert, and it offers little in the way of resources. To many, governing this desolate country often doesn't seem even worth the effort. Multiple countries have claimed ownership of Western Sahara in the past, but currently, there are two powers that theoretically administer Western Sahara. The majority of Western Sahara is claimed by Morocco, and the rest is claimed by a group calling itself the Sarari Arab Democratic Republic. There is no consensus among other countries as to which, if either, has a legitimate claim to Western Sahara. Meaning that, to the outside world, Western Sahara has no legitimate governing body and no laws. This means that the people living in the harsh deserts of this lawless region remain forever trapped in a legal gray area. No part of Antarctica is recognized as being owned by any specific country. Although a couple countries have put forth claims on this barren continent, including Australia and Argentina. Instead, it has roughly been governed since 1961 by the Antarctic Treaty System. This treaty puts all people within Antarctica's boundaries under the jurisdiction of their home countries. The Antarctic Treaty System also strictly forbids all form of military activity within Antarctica, including weapons testing. Military personnel are, however, allowed to participate in scientific research. Mining is also banned in Antarctica, as is the disposal of nuclear waste. The purpose of the treaty is to preserve Antarctica as a place for scientific research. To that end, everyone is free to come and go as they please throughout the continent. And while people are in Antarctica, there's no one around to enforce any serious rule of law. The Sonoran Desert in California was once home to Camp Dunlap, a military barracks. When it was decommissioned in the 1950s, the buildings on this military base were dismantled, but the concrete slabs remained. These slabs eventually gave us the name Slab City. In the 1960s, people from many walks of life started moving into this area. The very first residents were harvesters of nearby creosote leaves. Some were impoverished and had nowhere else to go, and others simply wished to live off the grid. Today, about 4,000 people reside there in winter, and 150 remain throughout the year braving 120 degree temperatures. While this land belongs to the state of California, and the laws of California and the United States apply to Slab City, in practice, however, Slab City is so remote that it is free from nearly all governmental interference. It also has no running water, electricity, and trash pickup or sewer systems, all things commonly organized by governments. For the most part, the residents of Slab City make their own rules and handle their own affairs. Another lawless place in our world is simply known as the High Seas. Generally speaking, any open water at least 12 nautical miles from a coastline is legally considered as international waters. Water within those 12 nautical miles, however, are territorial waters belonging to the nearest country and are governed by its laws. However, no country has control over international waters. Thus, no laws govern it. It has been agreed via treaty that ships in international waters are under the jurisdiction of the country which licensed them. For example, a murder on an American ship would be dealt with according to American law. But international waters are not entirely an anything-goes zone. It has been agreed by international treaty that any country may exercise jurisdiction over international waters in order to combat crimes such as piracy. There are also disputes as to whether certain bodies of water can be considered as territorial waters or international waters. Russia, Canada, Norway, and Denmark all claim parts of the remote Arctic Ocean, while the United States and most European countries consider it international waters. This is particularly important because massive reserves of fossil fuels and other strategic resources likely lay beneath the seabed of the Arctic Ocean. Ever since the fall of the Taliban in Afghanistan, the first democratically elected government in the history of Afghanistan was established. However, the government often has no power at all beyond the major cities of Afghanistan. 
Once you reach the more rural areas of this country, it becomes an entirely different story. Unaccountable warlords have controlled these remote areas for decades, seizing and controlling them by force and without government sanction. When traveling in these regions, laws fall by the wayside and instead, the people are governed by what can only be called informal communal rules and bonds, which are almost never enforced consistently. In addition, militant activity is a danger throughout the entire country. The Taliban still controls significant portions of the country, and the Islamic State controls small portions as well. And finally, the most anarchic place on all of Earth is the place without any form of civilization or rule of law. This wretched hive of scum and villainy is the YouTube comment section. Nah, just kidding. Anyways, for more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists while you're here. And we'll see you all next time.